here, and this is our final build for build two of Mark Rober's creative engineering course. <coughs> uh, we're in the bathroom because it's a dark room with a flat wall. Uh, we have a bunch of other darker rooms in our house, but uh, this one has the most like smooth walls and has the most space that we can find. So uh, this is what we're using. Uh, we made a dual axis like glow in the dark art maker. As you can see, if I move the servos, they move like that. And if I have um, attached the light on there, which I will do in a second, it we have some glow in the dark paper behind here so that it won't uh, charge up while we're filming here. Um, this is the light we used. It is a gear light. We got it on Amazon in a two pack, and it's actually pretty bar pretty bright as is. Um, we did a bunch of math to make sure the servos could handle it, and they can, but just barely. Um, it's pretty bright, but we needed to concentrate the light a little more. So I 3D printed, I designed and 3D printed this tube, which has uh, an outer diameter that matches this, so that it slides on. And then it has a lip for it to stop on. And it slightly tapers down to a smaller point right here, like this. Now the light is much more concentrated as compared to the original. But we also thought that this just wasn't bright enough. So we found these lenses. I need some light, please. We found these lenses, and as you can see, if you put them on the end of the flashlight, they somewhat concentrate the beam. Like this. But we figured out that the right length was about here for it to be the most concentrated. So I added this flange on the end of my uh, tube so that this lens can fit over like this. And that works really well. Like that. And that's pretty concentrated. But we did notice that around the edges here, you can see there's a little bit of like a halo almost. So we made this. It is uh, the same one of these lenses, except with some black paint around it to create sort of like a pinhole camera. So that when I put it on, it looks like that. As compared to this one, it's just a little bit better. So. It mounts on here using this rubber band attached to a servo arm here. And it goes on like this. Whoa. Okay. Yeah? The glare lights worked a bit better. It did? Mm -hmm. No way. See the that versus that. I really don't see a difference. This one looks like a little bit more point. <gasps> I think you're right. You're right. Well, thank you. I did not know that. Very helpful. So what did you just do? I just learned that the clear lens actually works better than our painted lens here. Uh, making new findings every time. Just attach this here. And then now that that's on pretty well, I can show you how it works. Okay, I'm going to turn off the main flashlight, okay? Okay. And then we're going to drop the towel. All right. All right, so let's drop the towel. And there's the paper. As you can see, it uh, kind of like moves around. And it can be hard to control, probably because I've never really had a joystick like this before, since I don't have any practice with like a gaming console, like an Xbox or a PlayStation, yet. But uh, as you can see, I can sort of... As you can see, it moves around, and uh, I know it's not perfect, but it works like we intended, 
and I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so now turn off your light so we can see the glow in the dark. Can you cover up the Arduino lights? As you can see, it doesn't really make a specific design, but it does make a pretty cool pattern. It's hard to see on the cell phone, but it's definitely there. Yeah, let me see if I can do it. Okay. Oh yeah, you can't see it at all. Yeah, the cell phone doesn't have enough light to take it in, so it just sees a big black blob, but there's definitely like a pattern there. There is. Hmm. I wonder if 